In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons that you should maybe not consider moving to Canada in the year 2024. Now, I just wanna start off by saying that I still live in Canada and I have been here for over two years now and I'm actually really enjoying it. But like everything, there's gonna be pros and cons. So without further ado, grab a Tim's and join me on this journey. So the first reason that it can be really difficult to move to Canada is finding a job in Canada can be really challenging. For immigrants especially, finding a job can be particularly more harder and there's a few reasons for this. Number one, getting your credentials recognized is something that is really challenging and can actually take quite a while to process. I know there's been lots of examples where people in Toronto um, are actually driving taxis, however, in their home countries they were doctors. And this is part of the reason for that is actually getting those credentials recognized from your home country in Canada can be quite difficult. And in some cases, people have to take full courses or redo their whole education just to do the same job that they did in their home country. Now, even for me coming from the UK as a teacher, I had to do some classes to get my teaching certification recognized. And I would say in Canada and the UK, actually our education systems are very similar. So even for me having to do those classes, that still took a long time and actually that really delayed that process. For me, it actually took well over a year before I could actually teach in Canada. And for a lot of people, that can be really challenging. If you can't do the job that you wanted to do, then that can make integrating into Canada much more difficult. I know for me, I was actually very fortunate that I was still able to do a job in a similar field and still within education. But if I couldn't do that, I don't know if I would have lasted as long in Canada because I would have came frustrated. And even for me, that process just felt so long and more and more difficult. And I felt like every single time I was trying to do something, more and more hurdles would get in the way. One thing I will say too, when you are looking for jobs, is in those bigger cities, they're gonna be much more competitive as well. So even for me, I live an hour from Saskatoon, which is a slightly bigger city. And even in Saskatoon, getting a job in teaching is very difficult and very competitive. And that's similar across the whole of Canada. So when you are looking for jobs, just make sure you do your research before you apply or before you choose what city you're gonna move to. So that leads you on to number two, which is the house prices are literally insane. When I actually moved to Canada, I wrongly assumed that houses would be cheaper than what they are in the UK. And that's because in the UK, there is also a housing crisis where houses feel very unaffordable, especially in the Southeast in London, where I was living. However, in Canada, it is the exactly the same, especially in those bigger cities. Now, there are provinces in Canada, like Saskatchewan where I live. I know Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and places like that are somewhat cheaper provinces to live, which is awesome. But if you wanna live in a big Canadian city, then housing is likely gonna be a problem just because they're so expensive. And again, it's so competitive. There's not enough houses. And I would say places like Toronto and Vancouver are very similar to places like London and New York, where the sense that houses just feel unaffordable for the average person, unless you're on a very high salary. And one of the drawbacks, especially in those big cities, is often people have longer commutes to get to their place of work because housing is so expensive. So that leads it on to number three which is summers and while they're wonderful one of the downsides of summers in Saskatchewan or at least in most of Canada is how many mosquitoes and bugs are out and this makes you think when you live in winter and it is so cold and you just can't wait to get outside but when you're outside there are so many mosquitoes outside that actually it just makes it sometimes intolerable to even be outside in those times of year. Now, when I first moved here, I remember I had like 20 bites when I went out for one walk and I also used bug spray. So 
that does happen. And again, it depends on where you are in the country. That might not be like that everywhere, but it is so annoying. <laughs> and if you're like me, I'm not used to having bugs and insects flying around. And in the UK, we don't really have mosquitoes. So it just was something that I had to get used to. And if you are moving here, <laughs> make sure you have bug spray for the summer because you will need it. So that leads me on to number four, which is the high cost of living. Canada is a really expensive country to live and I've already addressed housing, but you have other things too. For example, you have high groceries, you have high cell phone bills. In fact, I pay $100 a month for my cell phone bill and I only pay for a SIM card. I don't even get a phone with that contract. And it is just so expensive and coming from the UK where both groceries and cell phone bills are so much cheaper, I just can't believe how much they are. Now, when I use the obvious examples, cell phone bills and groceries, there are other things that are really expensive too. For example, flying around Canada is insane. Getting a train in Canada is almost impossible, or at least where I live in Saskatchewan anyway. And so many things, you're just paying so much more, which I just don't get. And I think part of the reason is there just isn't much competition in Canada. And that protects Canadian companies, which is fantastic and that's wonderful. But on the flip side to that, I find as a consumer, it means you're paying more in many cases. And finally, that leads me on to number five, which is the distance between Canadian cities. And because Canada is such a big country, naturally going between places is gonna take that bit of time. I think about where I live, for example, if I wanna go to Saskatoon, I have to drive an hour and a half, or if I wanted to go to Edmonton, that's four hours away. So because the cities are so big, actually going between different places can be much more challenging. And one of the ways you have to do that is flying or driving. And if you're flying, well, <laughs> plane, costs in Canada are not cheap. In fact, sometimes it feels like the same cost to fly back home than what it does to travel in Canada. And on the other side, gas is a lot cheaper depending on where you are in the country. So for example, where I live in Saskatchewan and we're close to Alberta, then it's somewhat cheaper. But I know in other provinces that isn't the case as well. But because it's so big, it's gonna take you a lot of time if you wanna travel between different cities within Canada. And for me, that makes it a little bit harder to actually see more of Canada and to see more of the country, which I would love to do. So there we have it. There are five reasons why you shouldn't move to Canada in 2024. Please take this video with a pinch of salt. These are just my opinions and again, do your research. There are so many positive things about Canada as well. But like anything, there's gonna be pros and cons. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it just really helps the algorithm. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. But more importantly, I wanna hear from you. If you've moved to Canada already, what things would put you off moving here now. And if you wanna to move to Canada in the future, then what are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments down below. So thanks so much everyone. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.